Welcome back to the Scottabyte channel and this is Scott. So I've entitled today's presentation, Connect to a VLAN Easily. In many of my previous videos, we learned how to create a VLAN on a managed router. Assuming you have existing VLANs, this video will show you how to connect to them easily through Windows or Ubuntu. A prerequisite is that the managed switch port must be configured to allow connection to any VLAN. Um, as an example, profile all or a profile that contains the VLAN that you wish to connect to. So let's go connect to a VLAN. Here we are in Windows 11 Device Manager and I can go down to Network Adapters and there you can see that I have an Intel Gigabit Network Connection. If I right click on it and go into properties and go into advanced and I scroll down, you can see that there is a packet priority and VLAN, but this option doesn't give us any settings to set the VLAN number that we want to configure. So I think one of the easiest ways to fix this is to go ahead and use the virtual switch manager in Hyper-V. So in order to do that, we're going to go click on the window start. We're going to type in optional features or rather windows features. And then we have the option to turn windows features on or off. When it brings up that screen, I have Hyper-V already highlighted. And the reason for that is because in a previous video, I used Hyper-V. If you don't have Hyper-V enabled, go ahead and enable it. And Hyper-V is the hypervisor to create virtual machines, but it's also useful to provide the virtual switch manager. So in order to go into Hyper-V, I'm going to simply type Hyper-V here. Bring up the Hyper-V manager app. And you'll notice in Hyper-V off on the right hand side, they have something called virtual switch manager. Then I select virtual switch manager. And you can see here that I have an existing WSL switch because I used that in a previous video, but we have the option to create new virtual switch. So before I do that, I'm going to go ahead and open a command prompt and see what our network configuration is right now. And the way that I'm going to do that is with an IP config command. So the IP config command is showing that my current network connection for my ethernet is 172.16.1.188, which is an address on my main LAN. These other two virtual devices, our virtual ethernet, are related to WSL that we did in a previous video. So I want to create a new virtual switch and I want it to be an external switch. So I click on create virtual switch. Once I do that, I can name this switch for my own purposes, and I'm just going to call this VLAN 30 because I plan to use VLAN 30 with it. And it is going to be an external network, and I'm going to allow management of it. And I'm going to say enable VLANs, and down here I'm going to put in VLAN 30, and then an apply. And then I click yes. And in a minute, it creates the new VLAN. So I'm going to clear the screen here in my terminal, and I'm going to do another IP config command. And you can see that it still has the address 172.16.1.188. But now it says it's a virtual Ethernet VLAN 30, which is what we wanted. So we're going to do an IP config slash renew. And now an error occurred while renewing interface v Ethernet VLAN 30, unable to contact your DHCP server. And like most things in Windows, I had to reboot. But now that I've rebooted, if I come up with a command prompt and I do an IP config, you will see that I have an address of 192.168.30.158 which is in fact an address on my VLAN 30 as I had expected. 
Okay, so here we are in Ubuntu and we're going to do the same thing that we did in Windows. This time we're going to launch a terminal and after launching the terminal we're going to do a sudo apt install of VLAN in order to have VLAN support. Type in my sudo password and you can see on my system that I already have VLAN support installed. So the next step I want to do is do an nm-connection dash editor and this will bring up the network manager connection editor GUI. I press the plus sign in the lower left hand corner and I click the drop down menu and change from Ethernet to VLAN. Then I click on create and when it clicks on create I think at the top I'm going to name this VLAN 30. That's the name of the connection and then I'm going to go to parent interface and in my particular case I'm choosing the ENP 1S0 wired connection. Your connection will be different but choose whatever that is because you need a parent device in order to be able to create the VLAN. And then here where I'm going to type in 30 for VLAN 30 and I'm going to say my interface name is going to be VLAN 30. And then I'm simply going to type or click on the save at the bottom. So now I have a VLAN called VLAN 30. If I bring up another terminal and in this terminal, I'll go ahead and make this bigger. And in this terminal, if I do an if config, you will see that at the very top of the screen, I have my physical adapter, which is EMP1S0, and it is at 172.16.1.196, which is on my main network. And then I have a loopback connector, of course, and I have a bridge, which I created for something else on the channel. And then I have VLAN 30 down here, which has an address of 192.168.30.80. So unlike Windows, we can have multiple adapters here. So we can do the same thing actually again because I can hit another plus sign. I can go down here and choose VLAN and I can do another create and I can go up here and call this VLAN 80. And then I can give the parent interface again as being the same one, ENP. 1S0, yours will be different. This time I'm going to do an 80 for VLAN 80. And then I'm going to say that the interface name for this will be VLAN 80. And then I'm going to click Save. And it creates the VLAN 80. So I'm going to bring up another terminal. Make this bigger again. And we'll do another if config. Again, you can see at the top that we still have the 172.16.1.196, which is the address for the main LAN. If we move down, we have also a VLAN 30 device, which has the address of 192.168.30.80. And we also have a VLAN 80 device, which has the address of 192.168.80.210. To delete the VLAN adapters, it's just as easy to reverse it by going in here to VLAN 30 and clicking the minus to remove it. And also the VLAN 80, click the minus to remove it and do a delete. And then I can exit my network connection manager and we will again go back in here and do an if config. And you can see that I now have ENP1S0, which I've always had, main address on the LAN being 190 or 172.16.1.196, my loopback adapter, and the virtual adapter I had before, but both VLAN 30 and VLAN 80 are gone. So there's always the possibility that you might be on a server and in that particular case, you might only have the command line accessible to you. If you've watched my channel before, I usually encourage the use of NetPlan to make configurations for your network devices. 
but it is possible to create virtual VLAN adapters using only the command line. So here again, as a reminder, we only have the loopback adapter and we have ENP 1S0 and then we have this uh, virtual adapter down here that is really part of uh, what I did on the channel previously. So in order to be able to create one of these from the command line prompt, we do a sudo IP link, add link, ENP 1S0 is my parent device, so your device is gonna differ on your system. And then name, and I'm gonna call it VLAN 30, type VLAN, and the ID is 30. So we've created it now. Um, it says it already exists because I previously done it here. The second step that you need to do here is to go ahead and set its link up and we do that. And so now we've enabled it. And if we do an if config, you'll notice that we have VLAN 30 here now, but we don't have an IP address for it yet. And that's because we have to use the command sudo dhc client VLAN 30, and that will go ahead and cause it to get an address. And now if we do another if config, you can see that VLAN 30 in fact has an address of 192.168.30.80. I also want you to notice that if you launch nm-connection-editor, you can see that VLAN 30 is here and we could delete it from here but we're gonna learn how to delete it from the command prompt. So in order to do that, the first step that we're gonna to have to do is to bring the link down with the command sudo ip link set device vlan30 down, which brings the interface down. Now, if we go back and do an if config, you'll see that we don't see it in the list, but it still exists. And so we're gonna to have to go off and delete it as well. And we do that with a sudo IP link delete VLAN 30, and it goes away completely. And we shouldn't notice anything different if we do one more if config command. And sure enough, we just have our ENP 1S0, our loopback connector in that previous virtual bridge device that I had here. So, the nice part about this is that we have a way to do it from the GUI with NM Connection Manager, and we also have the ability on a server that perhaps doesn't have a GUI to do simple command line commands to create virtual connections for our VLANs that are existing on our network. So in summary, Windows won't let you create separate VLAN adapters out of the box without either third-party software such as the third-party Intel or Realtek Diagnostic Utilities or by using Hyper-V Virtual Switch Manager, which is what I did in this video. This is because Windows has no native way to bind multiple addresses to different VLAN adapters natively. Linux allows for the creation of multiple VLAN adapters as long as VLAN support is installed using the sudo apt install VLAN command. And the manage port profile for the physical network adapter must have a port profile that allows connection to the VLAN that you want to use. Anyway, that's it for today. Please subscribe and like to the channel and don't forget to hit that notification bell and we'll see you next time.